Hello everybody, this is Lara with your weekly video for Bitcoin for the week beginning Monday 15th of August 2022. My main wave count still expects that a sustainable low is in for Bitcoin and it's in the early stages of a third wave up at primary degree within a third wave up at cycle degree. That's an extremely bullish wave count. But Bitcoin's lows historically are really hard to identify. If it's going to make a new low, then I would expect it to do so and start to turn down really soon now. I have a little bit of concern this week for a, a slightly bearish short-term volume profile, a lack of range and a lack of momentum in upward movement. If the main wave count is to continue to have confidence, then we need to see an increase in volume, momentum and range with upward movement as the middle of a third wave at five low degrees should pass through its middle sooner rather than later now. My minimum price expectation for primary wave 3 is 392275. That is not a target, it is just a minimum expectation. The target will probably be quite a lot higher than that. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. I am preparing a presentation for Bitcoin for my Wednesday uh, FX Traders Edge presentation. Um, if you're not registered then you won't be able to get the link to view it afterwards so you could view it at 3 p.m. Eastern time on Wednesday or you could view it afterwards. I'm going to be looking at extended fifth waves in Bitcoin and I'm going to be looking at fifth waves to end third wave impulses one degree higher and what are the implications for that going forward for Bitcoin and I'm going to be giving you a range of possible not targets but a range of where these third waves could end up. I'll be including those ranges in next week's analysis going forward for Bitcoin. But it'll be supplementary to what you're getting every week, so you might find some value in registering for that and watching that. Okay, the wave count for Bitcoin, the main wave count, still the same. Cycle wave 2 ending here in December 2018. This was an 84% reduction in market value, a huge bear market lasting a year. And this high here above 65,000, the end of a five wave impulse, which has a really good look. One, two, three four five it's really common for bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies and commodities to exhibit fourth waves that are more brief than their counterpart second waves that's one reason why this is now the main wave count it's unusual though for bitcoin and its price history to exhibit a fifth wave which is not extended which is not longer than the third wave and that was the reason for quite a long time why this was an alternate but the main previous main wave count was invalidated by a process of simple elimination ranking things in order of probability if the highest probability count gets invalidated we move to the next one and that becomes the main count this is now the main count and has been for quite a while so from this low to this high, we have a, for Bitcoin, slightly atypical looking impulse. Intermediate one, two is time consuming and very deep, that's normal. Three, extended an impulse with a bit of a curved look, absolutely normal. Four is zigzag, shallow, brief, compared to intermediate two, this is normal. And five, quite short, this is the abnormal part of the wave count for Bitcoin. But from this low to this high, this movement does subdivide beautifully as a five wave impulse. If primary one is over there, then primary two is probably also complete as a double zigzag. It's a 0.78 correction of primary one, pretty close to a common range of 0.8 to 0.9 or even deeper of the wave it's correcting for a large degree correction for Bitcoin. And it's lasted 32 weeks to primary way one's 52 weeks. So this looks absolutely normal. If it continues lower, I'd look out for it to end within a range between 80 to 90% the length of primary one, below 16, 310.97 to 9751.14. If this main wave count is wrong, and I'm wrong in expecting that this is a sustainable low for Bitcoin, and if it does move lower, which it could still do, I will take that as an opportunity. And if it gets down into this range, it could be a fantastic buying opportunity. The bigger picture for Bitcoin is still extremely bullish. I'm adding a channel to use for confidence to primary two. I'm drawing it from the start to this high here. If we see a break above this channel with a full daily candlestick above and not touching this trend line, I would then define that as a proper breach. I would then have a lot of confidence in this bullish wave count. If primary 2 continues lower, technically it may not move beyond the start of 1 below 3191.3035. At the daily chart level, we're going to focus now on this movement, this low down here, 
the end of primary two is this point. So far, I'm labeling an overlapping one, two, three, four, five first and second waves. This little second wave incomplete. This means that for the short term, the short term wave count for Bitcoin expects a third wave at five degrees should be getting ready to move through its middle. That should have push from momentum. MACD is increasing. It should also have support from volume. That's a little bit of a concern. And it should have an increase in range. That's a little bit of a concern. And so this wave count now expects an increase in upward momentum, volume and range sooner rather than later. Along the way up, future pullbacks may continue to find support around the lower edge of the space channel. The first one to come up may be today, tomorrow for sub, uh, sub micro wave two. Draw the space channel from the start of minute one to the end of minute two. Place a parallel copy on the end of minute one. The middle of the third wave, or at least one of these fifth waves to end the third wave one degree higher, should have power to break through resistance at the upper edge of this channel. After that, a curve and a back test of support before moving up and away is what I'd expect. Here's the upper edge of the channel from the weekly chart. This is important for confidence. If I see a full daily candlestick above and not touching it, I'll then have a lot of confidence in labelling this low, sustainable down here. The minimum price expectation for primary three, not a target, just a minimum expectation. A target would be probably well above this point is for it to reach 5.71 the length of primary one at 392275. I'm using that number because that's the prior shortest third wave at a larger degree I've seen in Bitcoin's price history. So I'd expect this to reach at least the previous shortest length and probably a lot longer than that. That's why this is not a target, it's just a minimum. Along the way up, a new high above 26,350.49 by any amount at any time frame would add quite a lot of confidence to this wave count. At the daily chart level, that's why this is the alternate wave count, seeing primary two incomplete as a single zigzag and intermediate C an incomplete impulse. Within the impulse, minor four continuing higher as a triple zigzag that reduces the probability of this wave count because this Elliott wave structure is uncommon. It's not very rare, it's just uncommon. Minor four may not move into minor wave one price territory above 26,350.49. That Elliott wave rule is absolute. A new high by a fraction of a cent on a tick chart immediately invalidates this wave count. That's why we could then have some confidence in the main wave count. The target is for primary two if it were to continue lower to reach for intermediate C to reach equality and length with A at 12417. And that's within that common range that was on that first chart, the weekly chart. At the weekly chart level, this is an alternate. I see a lot of people also have this Elliott wave count for Bitcoin, seeing primary one incomplete with intermediate one, two, three. This is the same as the main wave count up to this point here. But then what if intermediate four was a complete expanded flat over down here? Intermediate four, not quite, not quite twice the duration of intermediate two, but getting close. This is one thing that reduces the probability of this wave count. I've been analyzing commodities on an almost daily basis for many years now and analyzing cryptocurrencies a lot for the last few years. And one of the things I note, which any technical analyst will tell you about commodities is they exhibit swift, strong fifth waves, extended fifth waves. That fifth wave extension has a tendency to make the fourth wave that comes just before and after more brief and shallow than the counterpart second wave. So it's really normal for these markets to have a fourth wave that is more brief than its counterpart second wave and fairly unusual for these markets to exhibit a fourth wave that is more time consuming than its second wave. So when you have a wave count, an entirely valid wave count, where the fourth wave like this is more time consuming than the second, you have to rank it in terms of Elliott wave as having a lower probability. That is why this wave count has a lower probability. I'm very used to how these markets behave with their second and fourth waves and this is not common. But it's a valid wave count and if price does move a little bit lower then I could possibly label minus C 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It could move a little bit lower. That's possible. But then intermediate 4 is going to be even more time consuming and over twice the duration of intermediate 2. The probability of that idea is not good. If it does continue lower it may not move into wave 1 price territory below 13826.76. 
I'm going to have to continue to run this wave count alongside the main weekly chart probably for months if not years yet while intermediate 5 completes primary wave 1. It's only when we get into the next bear market for Bitcoin that we'll know which of the two weekly charts is correct. While they both remain valid, we have to consider both. You can't get stuck on one wave count. You have to be open-minded and flexible or markets are going to prove you wrong. At the weekly chart level, the last completed candlestick, another upward week, higher high, higher low, green body and volume above the average volume for the green candlestick above the previous red candlestick so there is still a little bit of push from volume it's not as much as I'd like to see but this is one reason why these markets cryptocurrencies their lows are so hard to identify they can be actually quite weak off their lows and I've looked at so many lows on so many different cryptocurrencies and really analyzed Bitcoin's lows in detail and they can be weak off their lows so you have to be open-minded and flexible on balance volume gave us a bullish signal a couple of weeks ago it broke above resistance it's tested support and moving up and away that's another bullish signal that supports the main Elliott wave count this week ADX is slightly declining indicating no clear trend so it's telling us it's possible there's been a trend change back down here ADR or it's or it's possible that this is a counter trend movement it doesn't tell us which of those two situations is happening it just tells us there's a possibility of either RSI back in neutral territory as is money flow index ATR continuing to decline as price moves lower and now higher is starting to be a little bit of a cause for concern we'll look at that in more detail at the daily chart level and stochastics back in neutral territory and I leave this down here a lot of people are assuming that Bitcoin and the S&P have to move together they absolutely do not the answers in the charts look at what dates they make their highs and lows they just don't make highs and lows together and the correlation coefficient tells us that these two sets of data do not have a reliable statistically significant positive correlation they are currently positively correlated but the math tells us that could break down at any time it has completely broken down before to a negative correlation any correlation these two markets have from time to time is more likely due to chance and just a random chance experience and not because there's a relationship between them that's what the correlation coefficient tells us so I'm not going to make any assumptions about my analysis for one based on the another on the other that would be a wrong assumption to make I can't do that I have to go with the data not assumptions. This week at the daily chart level there was a gravestone doji a few sessions ago it has a little bit of a push from volume some really small range candlesticks for the last two sessions and this is a weekend but still actually here's another gravestone doji but price is making higher highs after them these could be early warning signs of a trend change coming up and a downward movement and I am a little bit concerned about that particularly as range continues to decline and now the volume profile up to this point I was saying it was looking bullish and now it's just not so clear we've got a red candlestick having stronger volume than the previous green candlestick although to be fair this is an upward session with a higher high and a higher low and it's only just red because it's a doji so you probably can't read too much into that I am slightly concerned about it though I'm also a little concerned that as price is making higher lows on balance volume is making lower lows let's watch this little range that on balance volume is generating as price is now stalling that resistance if we see a break above resistance or below support from on balance volume in the next few sessions I take that as a signal if that signal is bearish I'd have even more concern about the main wave count if the signal however is bullish I'd have a little bit less concern about the main wave count I'm still concerned this week though there's a new upward trend from ADX indicated it's coming up from low levels it rose up from below both DX lines it's rising it's telling us there's an upward trend prices making higher highs and higher lows the basic definition of an upward trend there's very strong resistance above at 28,000 though and probably a little bit below that about 26,000 as well I think price is getting close enough to that resistance area for it to slow it down RSI money flow index and stochastics all neutral and we've been over ATR so that's it for me this week with your Bitcoin analysis and I hope 
everyone here registers for that event because I've got some pretty exciting well okay it's really geeky but I think it's really exciting charts for Bitcoin and some calculations to come with that so thank you all for your support